Om Shanti Manda Shanti 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 Shri Radha Krishna Padamsa Kalita Shri Vishakam Vitamsa He Krishna Karuna Sinodina Bandhati Atvati Gopi Shakupka Kanta Radha Kanta Namastati Tapta Kansana Gauranghi Radhi Vrindavanishvi Vrishabhana Siddha Devi Panama Maharipi Vankha Kalpta Vishakhi Pasin Vivsha Patnam Pavana Vyo Vaishna Vyo Namo Nama Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Pastaya Bhutta Lishri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste, Sarasvata Devi, Gauvani Pacharani, Nirvishis, Sinavadi, Paskachai, Desatani, Shila Prabhupada, Ki. So, this evening we will present, make an attempt to present, the summary of the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. In the third canto, Srila Prabhupada, uh, in the third canto, Lord Krishna presents the principles of Karma Yoga. And this chapter starts with a question of Arjuna. And he will pose a similar question at the beginning of the fifth chapter. And again, a very similar question at the beginning of the 18th chapter. So, the, 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 the gist or the essence of that question is that should I fight or should I renounce? So I will read the first first to get the introduction. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So Arjuna said, O Chanartan, O Keshav, why do you want me to engage, engage in this ghastly warf warfare if you think that intelligence is better than fruitive work? Arjuna says, O Janardana, O Kishara, why do you want to me to engage in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence is better than fruitive work? So, Arjuna has not is something that he did not understand from the previous presentation in the second chapter. Uh, Krishna has used the word Buddhi Yoga. Krishna is called Buddhi Yoga. Buddhi means intelligence. <coughs> intelligence in, used in spiritual advancement. So, 
Srila Prabhupada equates Buddha Yoga with Krishna consciousness. But Arjuna has understood something different. He thinks, yeah, the Buddha Yoga means I'm going to renounce, I retire. I leave the battlefield and I'm going to practice austerities in a secluded place. Well, Buddha Yoga or Krishna consciousness <coughs> is the perfection of renunciation. But Arjuna has not understood that if he acts and does his duty for Krishna, there will be no reaction. It's a, it's a pure spiritual activity. It's acting as a spirit soul, factually, as a servant of Krishna. Because if when one acts for Krishna, then one is completely renounced. One does not think this is mine. That, uh, or one does not think this is for my enjoyment, no. It's all for Krishna and that's perfect renunciation. But Arjuna is misunderstood. He thinks Buddha Yoga is like the Jnanis, go, go to a secluded place, do the austerities, and then renounce the world. But when that is what Arjun wanted to go, he wanted to live a, le a life of begging and leave the battlefield. So renounce and become inactive. <coughs> But Buddha, Buddha Yoga but it means Krishna consciousness, being active, but completely renounced in your action. Buddha Yoga or Krishna consciousness means to be active, but you are active in your That So Arjun is confused. He says, my intelligence is bewildered. That uh, your, your instructions are equivocal, they are not clear to me. So tell me, give me one thing, give me one instruction so that I understand what's beneficial for me. And what is the answer of Krishna? So there are two kinds of men. Those who try to, under, to realize, to, to, to get self-realization, well, there are two classes of men, but they both want self-realization, but in a different way. One wants it, wants it to gain knowledge and, and mental and, and philosophical speculation. Uh, 
Устрени размишления, философски размишления. Trying to understand the difference be, between matter and spirit. Които ще опитват да разберат разликата между духа и материята. And the, the other class of those who go for self-realization, they, they try to understand, they try to, they, they perform devotional service. И тези, които извършват йога посредством изпълване на предано служене. So Krishna before in the, in, in the second chapter has spoken about Sankhya Yoga. <coughs> and we heard that uh, the soul is, cannot be destroyed, it's eternal, it never took birth. It cannot be destroyed by any weapon that the and getting bodies and one after another is the, like when, when, when the body dies and one gets a new body for the soul that is like changing clothes, giving up the old clothes and getting new ones. So that is that is knowledge of matter and spirit. That that san, called sankhya, analytical study. They analyze this is this is the eternal, the soul, and that is temporary, that's matter. And then they come to the conclusion, yes, we are spirit, we are not a body. But then they must come to the point of, yes, but this is spirit soul, is a part and parcel of Krishna. So that is um, also a bona fide process to realize yourself, the soul. And that knowledge is also important in devotional service. You must know who Krishna is, who we are, and what our relationship is. We must know who Krishna is, what the soul is, and what's the relation between the soul and Krishna. And when they understand that relationship, then they understand, yeah, I have to live in a relationship with Krishna. <laughs> so I have to perform devotional service, that's their conclusion at the end. Okay, we have this first. Баунам Ханаманте Ханмама Папачти Фасив Савамити Саматма Судулаба. In the seventh chapter we have such Hyanis. After many lifetimes of philosophical speculation, they come to understand who Krishna is and then they engage in devotional service. But that takes many lifetimes. But by performing Krishna consciousness or devotional service, one gets rid of one's past karma. 
човек се освобождава от предишната карма. Кришна да дами бодиум, там и gives knowledge to the heart directly. И Кришна той дава знание в сърцето директно. But that it gives that when we are very serious after some years the voice of services start to give knowledge to the heart. Но знанието в сърцето Кришна го дава след много години преди за служене. So but if we start the voice of service we this knowledge this sankhya is also very important. Когато ние започнем това предно служене това знание санки е много важно. If we don't understand that we are not this body, if we don't understand who Krishna is, we cannot understand our relationship. And we cannot begin the voice of service. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada makes that point, and that's very important in the purport of verse 3. These both yogas means jnana yoga and bhakti yoga or buddhi yoga, they are interdependent as religion and philosophy. If, if one performs the, the highest religion, the devotional service, without understanding what one is doing, it's sentimental. And it leads to fanat- f- fanaticism. That one, one is capable minded, uh, short minded, not broad minded. Uh, well, phil- philosophy w- without religion is just mental speculation. That is also not going to help. Dry mental speculation. So that means we chant, we practice, and we hear the scriptures at the same time to get knowledge. And that combination is very good. If you chant without accepting a spiritual master and without getting knowledge from the spiritual master, it's not going to work. They are in, in their, in their, in, interdependent, the knowledge and the practice. But then, Krishna says to Arjun, you, you are going to, uh, to renounce and not fight. But still, you get reactions. That, that, uh, because as long as we live, we do things you get reactions unless you do them in Krishna consciousness. So by, by giving up your duty, you cannot attain perfection. Just by renunciation, you cannot attain perfection. In this world, Krishna says, everyone must act. You will be helplessly forced by the material nature to to act, to do something. You cannot do, stop doing things, even not for a moment. Krishna says that you will be forced to act, 
And then Krishna said, but you, if, if, you, if you renounce, you go to the forest, and, but what happens? You go to the forest, but your heart is still impure. You, you always think of sunset vacation in the forest. So you are a pretender. It, it, it's like a brahmachari in the brahmachari ashram who always thinks of girls in his mind. That's a pretender. Yeah, the Srila Prabhupada uh, uses the word uh, a show bottle yogi. He, he was in New York and he saw in, 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 in at uh, the window of a shop a big, big bottle for, for champagne. Yeah, but the bottle was empty. So it was only to show. So um, Prabhupada used, it has two, it took that word, show bottle, and says show bottle yogi. Externally they present him as a yogi, but internally they are thinking of, of, of enjoying the senses. So, this, yes. This Krishna says to, to Arjun, don't be a pretender going to the forest and thinking of sense gratification, no. Krishna Kasva Nibadi Pujo e the Ujish of Gurata Situn Nasdin. Because in the forest your senses will also remain uncontrolled. It's better to be sincere and try to control your senses by engaging them in Krishna's service, in Krishna consciousness. So engage your sense and the mind in the service of Krishna without attachment and that's much, for, much more superior. Don't be a show bottle spiritualist cheating the innocent public. Better you are a sincere sweeper in the street than a charlatan meditator. The last sentence of the purport. So it's better to do your duty instead of not working. Even to maintain your body, you must work. Yeah. Even if your food comes uh, from so your food comes by providence. <laughs> then still you have to take the food and put it in your mouth. You have to do something, work. 
трябва да вземеш храната и да сложиш в устата си. Ти трябва да извършиш някаква работа. Да, да. Но да работа, която ти правиш, ти трябва да работиш спиритуално. Но работата, която трябва да извършваш, тя трябва да е духовна. Шахнахта кармано и кармано и атра, локиям кармабандана. If you work to please Vishnu or Krishna, you will be free from all reactions. Ако извършваш работа си да обвинтвиш Вишну или Кришна, ти си, ти нямаш реакции от тази дейност. You will be free from reaction and no sin, sinful reactions anymore. Няма да си, ти ще си свободен от последствията и няма да имаш греховни последствия. So that, because that was the fear of Arjuna, I'm going to hell as sinful reactions. Защото това беше страха на Арджуна, греховните реакции. Because that will also be explained in the next chapter. Това също ще бъде обяснено в следващата глава. Say, if you act for the pleasure of Krishna, you don't get reaction. So if you act for, for, for the pleasure of Krishna, you are spiritually active, but materially inactive, no reaction. Uh, yeah, because in the be- since the beginning of creation, this jaha is there. The Lord has created all creatures, the demigods, and at the same time, he gave you jaha. The sacrifice to perform for Vishnu. And by performing this this jahya, this sacrifice or acting in Krishna consciousness, you will be happy and get liberation. С изпълняването на такава яки или жертва приношени, вие ще сте щастливи и ще получите освобождение. So you do the sacrifices to please Lord Vishnu and the demigods? И така извършвайте жертва приношени да удовлетворите Бог Вишну и по боговете. The sacrifice for Vishnu, but also for the demigods. The demigods are servants of Vishnu. And when they receive offerings, they give this, they, they forward these offerings to Vishnu. They are just a medium. Therefore, there is a cooperation between <coughs> between man and the demigods. They both are there to please Vishnu in sacrifice. And if, if you uh, do sacrifice for Vishnu, then uh, all the demigods will be satisfied, satisfied with you. And they will give you every, everything you need. If you do not sac- do sacrifice, then you are a stainer, you are a, de- a thief. Because then you are taking from Krishna, from Vishnu, without offering it 
without recognizing that it factually belongs to him. Защото ако вземем нещо и не го предложим на Вишну, ние всъщност вземем нещо от него. So those who do not that sacrifice of offering out everything to Vishnu, they are thieves. И тези, които не извършват джетва към Вишну, те всъщност са кръци. In the purpose, Shila Prabhupada writes that, yes, we humans cannot create fruits or vegetables or something. Humans cannot create water, sand, stones. <laughs> That's not possible. Хората не могат да произведат камъни, вода, земя. Нищо не могат да произведат. Кришна gives us all the vegetables, the plants and everything, the milk, everything. Кришна той дава всичко, всички зеленчуци, млякото, всичко. We cannot produce milk. You need a cow for that. Ние не можем да произведем мляко, но има нужда от крава за това. These are God's creatures. Това е работа на Бога. So none of these can be manufactured by human society. Нищо от това не може да бъде произведено от човешкото общество. It belongs to Krishna. То принадлежи на Кришна. When Sheila Prabhupada, in, that was in... Uh, Yeah, somewhere in the 70s, he was at Chuhu Beach. And at Chuhu Beach, usually at 6 o'clock, he would make at the beach a morning walk when the sun came up. It's very nice. Once I was at Chiu Beach and I was thinking I'm going to do the same thing at 6 o'clock, I make a walk at the beach, see and see the sun coming up. I was there at 6 o'clock. There were thousands of people with the same idea. <laughs> Too busy. <laughs> But in Prabhupada's time it was not so busy. That, uh, the, the population of India was one third of what it was now, what it is now. <laughs> But anyway, he made a walk with his disciples on the beach. And uh, an elderly man came, was completely dressed in white cotton shirt and with a white ganty hat. <coughs> and he was coming to Papa Prabhupada offering his respect. <coughs> and Prabhupada asked him, well, what are you doing? <coughs> he said, oh, I'm an industrialist. <coughs> oh, Prabhupada said, and what are you making? <coughs> oh, we are making, we are producing glass for windows and glass. Papa from what is glass made? And the man said, oh, from silicon, from sand. And Prabhupada said that uh, who has made the sand? And the man was a little pious. He said, Bhagavan. <laughs> And Prabhupada's reply was, Oh, you are stealing from Bhagavan? 
The man was shocked. He went away. And then Prabhupada continued and then came back in, in the other direction. And the man came back. And he said to Prabhupada, but I'm giving in charity. And Prabhupada smiled. Yes, you are a small thief. <laughs> that, uh, and so that's explained in 13 Jagya Sista Sina Santa Mutsanti Savra Kilbi Sai Vutsate Dit Kampapa Yepat Santa Atmakarana. That uh, the, the devotees, they don't get sin because they take only prasad, food offered first for sacrifice. Those who don't offer their food first to Vishnu, they get on they get sinful reactions, they eat pure sin. So, that's a good lesson for us. Don't eat anything which is not offered to the Lord. And then, the Lord Krishna describes the cycle of sacrifice. All bodies, they grow, they subsist, they are maintained by grains mainly. But grains only grow when there is rain. No, and rain comes from sacrifice. And sac for to do in your sacrifice, Arjun, is doing your duty as a sac uh, as a chatriya for, for Vishnu, is performing your prescribed duty. That, and these prescribed duties, they are described in the Vedas, how to do them. And these Vedas come from the Supreme Personality of God, Bhagavan. Therefore, your sacrifice of doing your duty is connected with transcendence, with the Supreme Lord. And now, Lord Krishna gives the definition of sin. Those who do not follow this cycle of sacrifice, they are their life is full of sin. It means everything you do in this life and you don't do it for Krishna is sin. You get reactions. Krishna says, Arjun, those who live only for the satisfaction of their senses, for their body, they are living for nothing. But one who comes to the point of doing this sacrifice, acting in Krishna consciousness, 
Soon you will feel pleasure in the self. Но тези, които а, а, до този момент да отдават трансцендентално служение, те чувстват удовлетворение в сърцето. Be satisfied in the self because he has no, no desires in this world to fulfill anymore. Те чувстват удовлетворение в сърцето, защото нямат желание да изпълняват други желания. So such a purified devotee for him there is no duty in this world to fulfill because these prescribed duties are there to purify him. So a self-realized man has no reason to perform such work. Because it doesn't depend on any living entity, it just depends on Krishna. So, so therefore, Arjun, don't be attached to the fruits of your activities, to the results. Don't be attached to success or failure. Do your duty as a sacrifice for Krishna without attachment and you will you will attain the supreme. Then Krishna speaks about his father, father-in-law in his previous incarnation as Ramachandra. Ramachandra was married with Sita. And his father was Janak Maharaj. So Krishna says, Janak, he performed prescribed duties for Vishnu very nicely. And, and you should follow in, in his footsteps. So, Janak Maharaj, he performed his prescribed duties perfectly. So, you, Arjun, you do the same to give the example for all the people. And if you perform your duty very nicely, you become a shrestha, a, a great leader. So, common man follows such a shrestha of, of a great leader. So all, all common people in this world, they follow the exemplary acts of great leaders. So, and then Krishna speaks about himself. For me, I, I have no work to do in this world. I don't want anything in this world and I don't need anything from this world. But I'm also doing my prescribed duties. When I was with Nanda Maharaj, I was a Vaisha and I have to care of the cows. 
Аз трябваше да се грижа за много крави. Едно ламе, чатря, едно дюма, дюма, аз съм чатря. И когато бях в чатря, аз спомнявам своя долг на чатря. Защото аз не правя моята работа, Арджун, тогава всички мъжете ще бъдат дистърпни. Защото защото Because they will follow what I do. Защото, Кришна казва, ако не изпълня веднъж дълга си, всички тези светове биха били обречени на гива и биха следвали това, което аз ще направя. Ако не изпълня дълга си, всички тези светове са обречени на гива. There will be unwanted population and the, the peace of all people will be destroyed. That, uh, so, people who, are, who have no spiritual knowledge, who are ignorant, they work with attachment in this world. But those who are learned and who are leaders, they should act without attachment and follow the right path. And then Krishna explains us how to preach. We should, we should not disturb the minds of those who are attached to their results in this world. Krishna says we should not be able to protect the mind of those who are attached to their results. Don't tell them to stop their work in which to, to which they are attached. Rather tell them to work with the spirit of devotion that in, engaged him in Krishna conscious activities. Не ги обезпокоявайте, а ги ангажирайте в дейности, профити с дух на преданост. Because these people are bewildered. Защото хората ще бъдат объркани. They are прагатики амани, гуни кармана сърсанка, ви му дадат ма карта ми тманиоте. They are bewildered because of false ego. Ще бъдат объркани заради фалшивото его. Because of false ego, they think they are the doers of their activities. But their doing is controlled by the three modes of nature. And I control material nature as a super soul. I give them what they deserve according to their karma. But, but they are ignorant of that, they don't see that. They think by their actions they will get what they want. That, but one who is in knowledge is a tattva vid. And one who is in knowledge, he never engages himself in sense gratification. He, he knows the difference between devotional service, devotional service which frees one from all reactions. And food if work 
which which entangles one in 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 the complicated meshes of karma. So people are bewildered. They think themselves the bodies and the body, they, and and they are ignorant, and therefore they engage them in uh, in acts for sense gratification, material act, uh, sense gratification, and they become attached. Mm. But the wise man should not should not disturb them. No, but the wise man knows that their activities are they do their activities because out of ignorance, because a lack of knowledge. Therefore, Arjun act with knowledge. Acting out of knowledge means three, three things. Consider three things. Do your work for me. With full knowledge of who I am. And don't desire profit of your work. And don't think yourself the proprietor. And free from lamentation, fight. Yeah, yeah. So these are spiritual principles that Krishna explains here. So know who Krishna is. Krishna is the owner of everything. And therefore you should you, you should never think yourself the proprietor, free from proprietorship. You should know you should know my position as the book term some as a supreme enjoyer and, and act for my enjoyment and don't want to enjoy anything for yourself. Therefore, do all your work, all your work, just as a sacrifice to me, to please me. That is essential advice. And now Krishna will say those who are following that advice as one result and those who are not following that advice they will get another result. So those who act to please me without a sense of proprietorship and without, uh, without uh, wanting to enjoy the results, because they are not non-envious of me, they are not envious of me, they become free from all their reactions, all their karma goes away. 
всичките тяхна карма, всички тяхни дейности, те изчезват. But those who do not follow my, my advice, Но тези, които не слушат моите съвети, those who are envious of me, тези, които не завиждат, who do not follow my instructions, не изпълняват моите инструкции, they will, they, they, they will get, they, they will lose all their knowledge. They will be befooled, bewildered, confused. And they cannot attain any perfection. That, uh, so then Krishna makes a, an important point that it does Uh, we, we, we can have a lot of knowledge, but we, we, have, we have our material nature. Krishna, he gave a lot of points now. He said, we have a lot of knowledge, but... So when we have all our material nature, но ние имаме собствена материална природа. We have our capabilities. Имаме желание. Some are intelligent, very intelligent, and, and, and inclined to philosophy. All others are more inclined for working, doing things practically. Някои имат различна природа, някои имат така природа да работят повече, други имат и интелектуална природа. And that nature we have uh, this nature we have acquired from the three modes. So that's important. One cannot repress one material nature. One must use it in the service of Krishna. Yeah, there was in this devotee who came to Prabhupada. He said, said to Prabhupada, ask me whatever you want, I will do it. And Prabhupada said, but what do you like to do for Krishna? And, 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 and the devotee said, Prabhupada, it doesn't matter. Just tell me what to do, I will do it for you. <coughs> Prabhupada, Prabhupada became more grave and said, try to understand our philosophy. What do you like to do for Krishna? And the devotee said, I want to make unbreakable miridangas. Unbreakable. So he produced this fiberglass mridangas, which we are using all over the world. So you, you cannot jump to, up to the spiritual platform, no, you have to purify first your material nature. By using your material nature in the service of Krishna. And then your material nature will become spiritualized, purified. And when you are purified, you can do anything for Krishna. But now Krishna says, but to do that, there are obstacles on the, of, 
Обстаклс. И Христо обаче казва, за да направиш това, има препятствия. Да, в последния върху върху Парипантино. Парипантино. Стъмблинг блокс. Какво е трансляция? Да, Парипантино. Okay, that's that's it. So, but that is strength, stumbling blocks of the path of realis- of spiritual realization. It's raga and vesha. Attachment and aversion. That means likes and dislikes. What gives pleasure to the body we like? And what gives pain to the body we don't like? So by that we are constantly busy with, 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 with avoiding the pains and what gives pleasure to the body. So this, this absorption in this attachment and aversion, dislikes and di- dislikes, makes you identify with the body and that's a stumbling block that's a paripantino so then krishna said says to Arjun, so, in conclusion, it's better to do your duty as a Kshatriya. Don't try to do the duty of another. It's better you die while doing your duty than trying to do another duty. Another person's duty. Because if you follow another, uh, uh, the path of another, the duty of another, it's dangerous. If you act according to your duty in Krishna consciousness, no reaction. Anyway, in the purpose, Srila Prabhupada writes about those who still did another's duty. <laughs> Vishwamitra, he was a Brahman, he, he was a, he was a Chatya and he wanted to become a Brahman. Parashuram was a Brahman and later acted as, as, as a Kshatriya. Also Dronacharya was a Brahman and became a Kshatriya. That, um, so yeah. But they could do that because they were transcendentally, transcendentally situated. But as long as one on the material platform, one cannot do that. That's dangerous. So Krishna spoke about this paripantino, this attachment and aversion. Because Arjun was attached to his grandfather and his 
Бишма Дейвен из Гуру, то на Чария. Защото Арджуна, той е а, така привързан към своя Гуру Дарона Чари и Бишма. And he was averse of killing them. И той е, не иска да ги убие. И сето Кришна, ти с аттачмен на вършина, how can I overcome them? Арджуна пита, There is a, a superior force that forces me to act as according to my attachment and aversion. What is this? And then Krishna points to the biggest problem that we have all. Krishna said to him, Krishna said to him, I have no problem it is lust, Arjun, is the greatest enemy. Lust is born from the mode of passion. And it is transformed into wrath, anger. And that is enemy number one. Fire, Krishna used the word fire in is the greatest enemy. Because this, sorry, because this lust covers our spiritual intelligence. As fire is covered by smoke. That's the human form of life. The fire is there, but it's covered by smoke or ignorance. And by hearing about Krishna, performing the voice and service, we, we must remove the smoke. Or lust acts as a mirror is covered by dust. It's, if a mirror is completely covered with dust, you cannot see yourself in the mirror. You cannot know who you are. The animals cannot understand who they are. Thus, and as the embryo is covered by the womb, that is a, a, a more dense covering. This is the trees or the plants. So the living entity, the soul, is covered by this these different grades of lust. And, and, and what is the effect of this lust on our consciousness? Авитам гяна мити на гяни на ничевари на камеру при на каунти, а дус при на линаша. Итс лъст Авитам ковърс гяна мити на Йо итернал ноулет са твя респект сола сървен в Кришна. Сама да репит. Това е това. This lust covers you, every time covers. 
And what does this lust cover? Just translate. What does lust cover? Question mark. It covers Yanam Etina. Your eternal knowledge that you are a servant, that you are a spirit soul, a servant of Krishna. So Jnana Nitya Varina, your knowledge, your spiritual knowledge is covered by this eternal enemy lust. And then if if your consciousness is covered by this lust, how what's the result? Yeah. You, you want to fulfill, to satisfy this lust. That, but you will never be satisfied. It is like, like putting ghee on fire. And that, so you will never be satisfied. Then Arjun has heard from Krishna is the enemy, lust is the enemy number one. Arjun is a Kshatriya, is a military man. He has heard this word enemy. So he wants to know where is this enemy. Where can I find this enemy? How can I kill this enemy? <coughs> so Krishna an answered that uh, the, the senses, the mind and the intelligence, that is where you find lust. So by that this lust covers your real knowledge. And it, it brings it brings all living entities in confusion. Hmm. Therefore, Arjun, you must conquer this lust by regulating your senses. But to regulate your senses, you must know that the senses are higher than dull matter. Senses are higher. The mind is higher than the senses. And intelligence is higher than the mind. And the soul is even higher than the intelligence. That, uh, so that's important knowledge. That bit, because to control your senses, you must strengthen your intelligence with transcendental knowledge, how to act as a spirit soul. Mm -hmm. 
So you must hear the transcendental knowledge, how to act as a spirit soul. And then the soul will be convinced and will push the intelligence to direct the senses according to this transcendental knowledge. To, to end, I will tell a, a, a story to, to uh, demonstrate this. So you have the object of the senses and the senses are higher. By, by the influence of lust, I think I'm the body. I look at my body and I start to think I'm a man. And then the, the I see a girl, a pretty girl, and immediately the sense of touch say, says, I want to touch her. And that, that feeling comes into the mind of the senses. And, and the eyes, yes, she looks very nice. And the eye says, the ear says, when she speaks, it's so sweet. So nature is is made as such that all the senses of a man are attracted to a woman and in the other sense also. The mind says, this feeling comes into the mind and the mind says, yes, we want to enjoy this girl, let's go for it. And then the intelligence comes between. So what with morality? Maybe she's married. And the mind says to the intelligence, you old fool, do something practical. And then the intelligence says, okay, you, you can write her a letter. And you, pro you promise her the sun and the moon. And you can throw some stars also. <laughs> but don't sign the letter because just, but just near to her is a strong man, could be her husband. So the senses are full of lust and, and, and by that the intelligence becomes the depository of lust. And then the mind misuses the intelligence to get sense gratification, to make plans for sense gratification, misuses the intelligence. So the mind overmasters the intelligence and you misuses the intelligence. 
But if you become Krishna conscious, then you hear the transcendental knowledge and the intelligence becomes strong. And the mind uh, and, and the soul directs the intelligence with attachment. You, so the intelligence controls the mind and instructs the mind, you act according to Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita. No nonsense here, you follow this. But to do that, the intelligence must have transcendental knowledge. Our actions in Krishna consciousness are based on transcendental knowledge. Therefore, what is the title of the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita? Transcendental knowledge. Therefore, that's the connection with the next chapter. So this was a summary of the third chapter. I try to explain it so that you get a deeper insight in the chapter. I record these sessions for you. So after this, by tomorrow, you can find that on a YouTube channel. College of Vedic Studies. College of Vedic Studies. Studies, yeah. Yeah, the, the, there are already 950 videos all over Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavad Gita. Thank you very much.